See, that was painless. Got it all in there. Now, to the sun. James A. Mursek wrote this on April the 2nd of this year. I did, just got this yesterday, but it's still pertinent. The sun has gone very quiet as it transitions to solar cycle 24. The AP index is a proxy measurement for the intensity of solar magnetic activity as it alters the geomagnetic field on Earth. Anthony Watts, a meteorologist, referred to it as the common yardstick for solar magnetic activity. With me so far? The AP index for February and for March is 5 a slight uptick from the three consecutive months of fours. An AP index of four is the lowest recorded number since 1932. The solar minimum has a long ways to go before it, uh, 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 it can be declared officially over. Now, this is why this matters. The transition into solar cycles, referred to as recent solar cycle minimums, has averaged 362 cumulative solar spot spotless days. Now, these minimums are low, and they indicate that we may, that the sun is going into a different cycle, that we have reached the grand maxima. Now, here's what's going to happen here. If either, either we're going to hit a grand maxima and it's over and we go into a solar cycle minimum, or the sun is basically going to explode and there's going to be massive solar flares, massive because of all the pent-up energy here. Either way, it's horrible. And if either of these threats materialize, the nation will be hit blindsided, writes Mr. Mursek. Both are related to the current state of the sun. And then he goes on to detail what happens with either one. There was a flare back in the 1870s. It was called the Carrington Flare, 184 February, 1872. If a solar storm of the magnitude of the Carrington Flare were to occur today, the effect on our modern technologically dependent society would be grave. Of these, the greatest threat would be and would lie in the loss of stable electric power. A massive solar storm could destroy many of the large custom extra high voltage power transformers in the United States. These items are unique and costly, about 10 million bucks a piece, and have manufacturer lead time of a year or more. If these things get knocked out, here's the effect. It could result in a large-scale blackout affecting more than 130 million people and would expose more than 350 major transformers to the risk of permanent damage. Imagine the effect of a total power blackout for months or years on 100 million people in the U.S., along with many millions more across the globe. The report then goes on to say that historically large storms have a potential to cause power grid blackouts and transformer damage of unprecedented proportions, long-term blackouts, and lengthy restoration times and chronic shortages. Shortages. Now that's just the, that's the good news. Just losing the power grid is the good news. That's if we're not going into solar minimum. If we are, as I have warned you about the coming little ice age, this is a little taste of what it was like during the last. Little Ice Age. Are you ready for this, you people? By the way, the telephone number, if you want to be on the show in the final segment here, 866-957-2874. Here's what happened during the last Little Ice Age. Hang on a second here. i got to stop this stupid idiot TiVo. Thank you. In the spring, Eliza, a slave, carrying her young son, fled from Kentucky by crossing the Ohio River on foot. The river was swollen and turbulent. Great cakes of floating ice were swinging heavily to and fro in the turbid waters. She leaped from one chunk of ice to the next until she reached freedom on the Ohio shore. What's the source of that? Perhaps you've heard of it. Uncle Tom's Cabin, 1851. During the Dalton Minimum, the Hudson River at the New York Harbor froze, enabling people to walk across the ice from Manhattan to Staten Island. 
The, the Hudson froze over completely during particularly brutal winters of 1779 and 1780, when the surface was solid for five weeks straight, and the British rolled cannons over the ice. In 1821, taverns were constructed in the middle of the river to offer warmth and refreshment to pedestrians. <laughs> During the Dalton Minimum again in 1803 to 1806, Captains Lewis and Clark, perhaps you've heard of them, led a transcontinental expedition to explore the greater Northwest. Listen to this. During the winter of 1804-1805, the explorers set up a winter base camp near Bismarck, North Dakota. The winter was bitterly cold. There were six days with temperatures of minus 30 degrees or lower. Compare this to the current low temperatures of Bismarck, which only one day in the past decade fell below 30 degrees. During the Dalton Minimum, listen to this. Early settlers routinely waited till winter to cross the Mississippi River because it was frozen. <laughs> they crossed with their wagon trains. In 1799, George Frederick Bollinger led a group of early pioneers from North Carolina to establish early settlements in what is today Missouri. They hoped to cross their largest obstacle, the Mississippi River, on the ice, frozen in midwinter. They arrived on the east bank of the Mississippi River opposite St. Gen uh, Genevieve in late December, pitched camp, and explored potential river crossings. Daily, the thickness of the ice was measured, and then on December the 31st, a chopped hole in the ice indicated thickness well over two feet. The next day, the settlers crossed successfully with their heavily loaded wagons <laughs> across the Mississippi River. Now, I have warned you and told you repeatedly. My friend David Archibald, the great Australian scientist, has been studying the sun for a decade here, and he has concluded that we are at solar minima, and that we have decades of exactly what I just described coming our way. So you people in Wisconsin and in the great north and midwest, if you thought you had it bad the last two winters, let me, let me tell you, you better get your tauntauns out and get them unfrozen. <laughs> You're going to need a tauntaun in the winters ahead from the Empire Strikes Back. We'll have more details on Free Phone Friday tomorrow, folks. Go to the website at MikeChurch.com.